What's up guys, Squid Dude here. Today I have a special build tutorial for you on the Staple Staggered Fuse Clapton. And what this build is, is basically taking two concepts and merging them together. And that would be the Staple Coil and the Staggered Fuse Clapton. There is a Staple Coil build tutorial on my channel and there is a Staggered Fuse Clapton build tutorial over on Twisted Messes channel. I highly recommend you take a quick look at both of those build tutorials so you get a good understanding of what's going on. We'll be using a lot of techniques and a lot of concepts from both of those builds. So I'll put a direct link in the video description if you wanna go check those out real quick, but I do highly recommend that you do so. The Staple Staggered Fuse Clapton came about through a series of different builds and different versions that built off of each other. And I think it's important to take a moment and look at that history and see where these came from. So I put together a little lineage chart with some images to kind of help explain how this came about. As I previously mentioned, this is a combination of the staple coil and the staggered fuse Clapton. The staple coil came about through um, myself. I came up with the idea because I was inspired by an Instagram builder named Keith Addicts, and he was doing what he calls the chainsaw wire or chainsaw coil, where he took about four to six pieces of ribbon and stacked them and then twisted them together and hammered them flat. Through Keith Addicts' work, that inspired me to come up with the idea to take a bunch of ribbon and stack it and clapped in uh, a wire around it, and that is what is now known as the staple coil. The staggered fuse Clapton came about and it started with Delzer JK, that's Jeffrey. And what he was doing is he was doing a loose Clapton and then fusing it together with a naked piece of canthal or just canthal by itself in the gap he created by the loose Clapton. He shared this idea with Blue Eye Goon 83, and that's Sean. And so what Sean was doing is he started to do um, a few variations of this. And at the time, the terminology kind of bounced around. It was called a suture coil at one point and then a stagger coil. And I'm not 100% sure on that terminology. But when I came across what Blue Eye Goon 83 was doing, that gave me the idea to do the, the full staggered fuse Clapton or what is now known as the staggered fuse Clapton. And what Blue Eye Goon 83 and Delzer JK were doing, uh, we're now terming that a half staggered fuse Clapton, if that makes any sense. But with the staggered fuse Clapton, instead of doing the loose Clapton, I developed the idea to just do um, a normal Clapton but using two pieces of wire as opposed to one. And then after doing that, removing one of those pieces of wire, which creates a nice even gap and you can replicate that and then fusing it together with the wire that you removed from the Clapton. So that's how the staggered fuse Clapton came to be. So then another Instagram builder who goes by Mega Jewel took the idea of the staple coil and took the idea of the staggered fuse Clapton and combined them. And what he did is he took one or two pieces of ribbon and placed it in the center of a staggered fuse Clapton. And when I came across this, I thought it was an absolutely brilliant idea. And I had a pretty good idea that it was gonna be a pretty incredible vape. So I had to try it. That night I went home and I put my little twist on it and I did five pieces of ribbon stacked in place vertically in the center of a staggered fuse Clapton. And with the ribbon placed vertically, that's how the staple coil is intended to be made. And uh, after I made it, I was blown away with how well it vaped. So since the creation of the staple staggered fuse Clapton, Wire Theory over on Instagram as well came out with her twist and her version of it, which is now coined the staple helix and she substituted the staggered fuse Clapton portion for a twisted fuse helix. It's a beautiful coil and Ohmboy OC 
has a amazing build tutorial on the staple helix it's on local vapes youtube i'll have a direct link in the description and i've also seen all kinds of variations people putting vertebrates in the center um, just just all kinds so that's a little bit of the history of how this staple stagger fuse clapton came about so let's get to the build all right so this build here is um, a staple stagger fuse clapton i did i think about three or four weeks ago and i've been using it almost almost daily and it's composed of two pieces of 26 gauge anarchist wire and five pieces of 0.5 ribbon and it's all clapton and fused together with 36 gauge nichrome 80 from twisted messes website <clears throat> and I built this on the Vesuvius atomizer, which is by Beyond Vape. So it's a 30 mil atomizer, and that's how I was able to get six wraps with this coil. And in a dual setup, six wraps comes to 0.12. One of the best things about this coil is, besides the fact that it's extremely flavorful, this has to be the best wicking coil that I have ever made. The first time that I made this coil, this build in particular, and put a wick in it, I did not have to re-wick it for seven days, which is just unheard of for me. Usually I have to re-wick a build every two to three days. Either the coils get gunky or the cotton breaks down. But what I've noticed with this build is that it wicks extremely well, just extremely well. And usually I end up re-wicking it now just because I change flavors. All right, guys, for today's build, I will be using some familiar tools here. You'll need your drill, pair of pliers, wire cutters, um, cotton, of course, pair of scissors, tweezers, a couple screwdrivers, one to wrap your coil around. Uh, the atomizer I'm using today is actually Twisted Messes RDA, and it uses an Allen key. The wire I'll be using today is 0.5 by 0.1 ribbon. It will also be using 36 gauge Nichrome 80 and 26 gauge Anarchist wire. The one thing to note, the 36 gauge will be used for the Clapton portion. If you're not gonna use 36 gauge, you can use 34 or 32. It will make this build a little bit easier, but you won't get the same performance out of it. However, whatever wire you use, you will need two spools of it, and I'll explain that later. I will also be using these 60 gram weighted alligator clips. This helps me in the process of removing one of the outside Clapton wires. You do not need these. Uh, you can do it by hand. I have just found that these help speed up this process. I acquired these through Amazon. I went ahead and took two pieces of the 26 gauge Anarchist wire and straightened it. And then what you'll want to do is go ahead and set up to begin the staggered Clapton portion. So I have my two spools of 36 gauge coming into the core at two different angles. And what this does is make sure that the two pieces of 36 gauge don't get twisted together as it's being fed to the core. While doing your Clapton, what I have found works best for me at least is to try to get this all done in one shot. If you stop, it's really hard to start back up without messing up the wire or without having the wire overlap itself. If during this process you overlap the 36 gauge on itself, it's not the end of the world. I just recommend you keep going through it and then you cut out the bad spots. All right, so just like in my last video on the fuse clapton, the way that I like to hold this wire feeding to the core is I like to take it and position it in between my pinky ring and middle finger. And this allows me to hold pressure on it while I clamp down with my thumb and index right by the chuck. At the start of this Clapton, I like to just work my way, or I just like to work away from the 
chuck to where my fingers can be up against it. And during this time, I'm getting those two wires to butt up against each other. And then once I'm in position, I just try to go as quickly as I can. So what I like to do here, is just clip the ends. After that process, I messed up pretty bad, about three eighths of the way down the wire. And it's not the end of the world, that's why I typically try to do uh, a little bit longer portions. That way, if I do mess up, I'll just go ahead and cut it there and use the good portion. All right, so we just did one wire. We're gonna go ahead and repeat that process again. You know, this 26 gauge length is probably 10, 10 inches long. And where I messed up on the last wire, I got about six inches of usable wire, which is perfect for a single coil. So like I said, we'll go ahead and try this again. All right, one thing to mention is when you get to the end, what I like to do is we will be, I'll be removing the Clapton wire that is furthest to the outside. And so what I'll do is when I, when I clip the end, what I like to do is to Keep the lead of the wire that I'll be removing. I like to keep that long and then keep the lead that keep the lead of the wire that will be staying. I like to keep that or clip it pretty short. That way I know what wire to remove. Alright, so after completing the wire, what I like to do is to It'll take it out of your drill and then on the end the lead that I left long I like to start and manually remove this wire this just get gets that lead away from the lead that's staying so it doesn't catch it and then once I have a little bit there I'm going to reinsert it into my drill and by flipping the wire 180 degrees you can still leave your drill in the same direction and when I go to mount this I'm mounting not only the 26 gauge but I'm also going to clamp down on the 36 gauge that stain and once it's in place Go ahead and clamp down. And at the beginning of this process, I like to just use my hand to pull the tension on this wire. Now you can do this all manually and just pull down on it. But I find that it takes a lot of time to do that. So what I like to do is use these 60 gram weights and clip it onto that 36 gauge. And the one thing to note here, if you are going to do this by hand, you 
don't want to let go of that tension. If you let go of that tension to reposition your hand, it will come and violently wrap on itself. So just make sure you always are holding tension on this wire while removing it. So now that the weight's on there, I'm gonna have to add a little bit more. So yeah, once the weight's on there, all you have to do is support the core. And I can just go really quick. So I'm not done yet, but my weights are about to hit the ground. So like I said, you want to keep holding that tension on that wire. Then when you get to the end, I don't like to take this wire all the way off. I'll still leave a little extra on the end there to just help secure it a little bit more. One thing to note, after you remove the one piece of wire, you wanna be very careful when handling this wire because you do run the risk of messing up the spacing of that Clapton, especially with your higher gauge wires like 36 gauge and higher. So we just finished making our two outside staggered Clapton wires. And as you can see, they're nice and evenly spaced, that gap. Uh, by running the, the two wires on the outside and removing one, I just have found that this is the best way to get that perfectly even gap. And once again, even more so with these higher gauge wires. So now the next step is to prepare our ribbon and then fuse it all together. So now we're gonna prepare our ribbon so we gotta stack it. So you'll wanna go ahead and cut yourself a few pieces of masking tape just to have handy. Uh, I also learned a new trick from Omboy OC himself to use a little bit of water to get the ribbon to uh, hold its shape together while you're stacking it. It'll just stay in a stacked form a lot easier. So you'll just wanna take five pieces of ribbon and I'm using 0.5. So I'm just going to take a little bit of water and run it down the ribbon. And that helps hold it together. tape that end up. You want to try to get this tape on there nice and tight to 
really hold that ribbon in place just like we're doing a staple coil. I'll go ahead and put two pieces on this end. The first piece was on there kind of loose. All right, so now we're going to take these three wires and combine them together. And what I like to do is it might fumble in doing this at first, but I want to get it all lined up. And I like to make sure that the masking tape is actually away from the other wires as much as possible. And when I'm um, getting this aligned, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 36 gauge and manually start to fit it into those grooves. Looks sloppy, but it doesn't matter. And then I'll go ahead and cut it so it's all flush. This little guy. So now that end is holding it all together. to insert it into my drill and just like with the staple coil uh, you want a good amount of tension on there but not too much and then what I'll actually do is undo some of those manual wraps and clean it up a little bit on the Three in, we're gonna loosely tape them together, so make sure you still have some masking tape. You wanna be careful running your fingers down this so you're not stretching the space clapped in. You don't have to get this tape on here really tight. You just want it to hold those three, well, the ribbon and the two staggered clapton's pretty nice. And once you get that taped and secured, go ahead and cut the ends of any excess wire. And now we're ready to ready to start fusing this or yeah fusing this together all right so before we start this portion just know that this is a huge pain in the ass and this is the most difficult and time-consuming part of this build so a couple things to keep in mind you want to make sure that this 36 gauge feeding to the core stays as perpendicular as possible and while you're fusing this together don't push up onto the core with that much pressure. You want a little bit to stabilize it as you're moving along, but uh, not enough to where you're gonna kink it or move the ribbon out from the center.
All right, getting ready to be done. All right, so at the end of this, when I'm done making this wire or when my patients have run thin, what I like to do is just, I'm not too concerned with getting it in the grooves, but I'm more concerned with getting it tight on there. So I'll pull down pretty, pretty tight. And just do a couple of rotations. And that way it keeps the 36 gauge nice and secure. Then I'll go ahead and clip the end. This has a very, very slight twist in the wire. It's not a big deal. Just like with the staggered fuse clapping though, you can hold on to the end and reverse it. And now it's nice and straight. All right, if you guys have made it this far, congratulations. That is a pain in the ass. I have a love-hate relationship with this build. It's the best build that I've ever vaped on but I absolutely hate making it. As you can see, all those little pieces of ribbon are in there, nice and secured, sandwiched in between the 26 gauge, 36 gauge fuse portion are all those little grooves and crevices for juice to flow into and for also vapor to exhaust out of. It's a flavor junkies wet dream. All right, so we're just gonna coil this very similar to how you would coil up a staple coil. You just wanna be nice and easy and let it fold and fold onto itself as you're coiling it. You don't wanna force it, but just maintain some good, good pressure. So I'm just using my thumb to push the wire up against the screwdriver. starting to turn on me a little bit. Straighten it back out. I think I'm going to be able to get five wraps on this, I think. We'll go ahead and do five wraps. There it is. All right, when I go to do this, I first just like to lightly pulse it. I'm getting a few hot spots on the top and right by the leads going into the positive post.
pretty lucky on this one. Seems to be firing nice and evenly. Has a nice good glow from the inside out. Heats up pretty instantaneously. It's ready for a wick. So one great thing about this coil is that the coil itself wicks very well and as I mentioned earlier the coil does such a great job at pulling the juice from the cotton when you're vaping on it and this is without a doubt the best wicking coil that I've ever experienced. So we just finished our staple staggered fuse Clapton. We did five wraps around a 2.4 millimeter screwdriver. It clocked in at 0.16 ohms. And you can see the, the vapor production kind of off of this single coil. Right now I have the airflow adjusted to the single coil mode and it's wide open. I'm getting, getting a nice, warm, flavorful vape. Throat hit is actually pretty mild. Yeah, so good luck on your builds. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.